Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome William Rickert, Chair, Board of Trustees. As Chair of the Teachers College Board of Trustees, I have the honor of officially opening today's ceremony and being the first to congratulate the 2019 Master's Graduates of Teachers College. The degrees you have earned are not just rewards for the courses, papers, and exams you have completed. They are also proof that you have collaborated with some of the best minds in your field, that you are ready to confront the biggest challenges, and that you have what it takes to become outstanding leaders and change makers. Many of you will take on the noble profession of teaching, armed with the rigorous combination of theory, practice, and specialized training that only TC can provide. There's no higher or more urgent calling than the shaping of future generations, and we salute all our teachers here today. But preparing teachers is only one way that Teachers College fulfills its mission of advancing education and improving the lives of individuals, families, and communities. TC graduates are dedicated to increasing well-being, both in and out of schools and classrooms and across the lifespan, as principals and superintendents, as artists and art administrators, as psychologists and health practitioners, and as leaders of every stripe. For more than 130 years, TC scholars have discovered new ways to understand the complex forces that shape our minds, our bodies, and our relationships with each other and the world around us. Their foresight led to the creation of many fields, such as social studies education, special education, and inclusive education, that many of you will now advance in your own distinct ways. Today, TC offers programs in education, health, psychology, and leadership, all sharing a single aim, to help individuals and communities reach their full potential and flourish. Now it is my very great pleasure to introduce the president of Teachers College, Thomas Bailey. Good afternoon. Let's go, come on, let's have a better good afternoon than a, yeah, that's it. So welcome to this wonderful occasion as we celebrate the accomplishments of our graduates. So now let's hear it for the Teachers College Class of 2019. Now, graduates, you're, sim you're certainly the stars of the show, but we also have a large supporting cast who need thanks as well. So first, our faculty, who have been and will always be vested in your success. So let's thank them. Our staff who help run the college and who put on this incredible convocation, who do that with skill, caring, and devotion to your health, your happiness, and to your success. Let's thank them. And perhaps the greatest thanks go to your families, your spouses, your partners, whose countless acts of generosity, kindness, and infinite patience were indispensable. Thank you. Now, nearly a century ago, the great trial lawyer Clarence Darrow said that lost causes are the only causes worth fighting for. Now, that might sound a bit quixotic. Darrow, after all, lost his most famous case defending a high school teacher in the so-called Scopes Monkey Trial. But while the other side won the battle, it lost the war. 
The trial proved a watershed moment that led to the widespread acceptance of teaching of evolution despite continued closed-minded opposition. Perhaps what Darrell really meant was when very important causes hang in the balance, we must fight all the harder for them because the stakes are so high. Or as the editor of the magazine The Nation recently said, there are no lost causes, only causes waiting to be won. What are those important causes waiting to be won today? What is the role of Teachers College in that fight? And what role will you pay, play as you prepare for the next stages of your lives? Let's start with an issue that confronts every single person on the planet, and for which, as many others have noted, there simply is no plan B. And I'm talking about climate change, climate denial, and the resulting fundamental disruptions of the world's environment, geography, population movements, and social structures that it will cause. In the last decade, the majority of respected experts have concluded that the increases in the level of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, the rise in temperatures, the melting of the polar ice caps, and the climb in the sea levels have dramatically accelerated. In short, we have already passed certain key tipping points. The next decade will be a make or break period for us all. We must literally find a way to stem the tide. Now, all of our programs and activities at Teachers College in health, education, and psychology have a role to play in responding to the potential and reality of climate change. But as educators, shouldn't we also think about climate change even more broadly as a metaphor for creating a healthier climate that achieves progress on a whole range of issues and challenges? Challenges ranging from stereotypes and biases that warp perceptions of reality and infect public discourse to the persistence of racism, sexism, anti-Semitism, and discrimination which poses an existential threat to our civilization, as lethal as climate change is to our, our planet, and to growing inequality, frustration, and thwarted goals in the world, as well as in our own country. What if, what if we created a climate where facts matter, where diversity of culture, experience, and thought is valued rather than feared, and where the freedom to think and speak freely does not become a license to insult, demean, or demonize those with whom we disagree? What if we turned our diversity into fertile ground for developing solutions that are broad enough to work on a mass scale, yet flexible enough to be adapted to different contexts? What will happen if we rallied our better angels and learned to work together for the common purpose and the greater good? The history of the civil rights movement and struggle, which ended legal segregation and outlawed racial discrimination in housing, voting, employment, furnishes us with important answers and examples. Those who were part of the movement did not solve every problem and, or get everything right, and neither will we. They made mistakes and often failed to follow through on their promises. So will we. There's still as much work to do to accomplish the goals of the civil rights movement, and we will always have more work for us to do to achieve our goals. But the civil rights movement got many, many of the big things right, and so could we. We could make major gains and progress towards becoming a better, more productive, and more just society. So the question for us today is this. How can we make the climate better for everyone? The civil rights movement required building awareness, knowledge, and understanding and confronting racism and structural barriers to progress and equality. And likewise today, we must educate ourselves about the true nature and scope of the problems we face. Instead of turning away in fear or denying that the problems exist at all. 
We must educate ourselves about which solutions really work, as demonstrated by rigorous testing in the lab and in the real world, rather than privileging ideas that we merely want to work or think should work. And as educators, we must work to make our climate inhospitable to racism, anti-Semitism, and all forms of discrimination. At the most basic level, we must educate ourselves about one another. Ultimately, as I have said, we need each other's perspectives and ideas. But to create such an exchange, we must first stop fearing and distrusting one another and then try to understand what the world looks and feels like from each other's vantage points. What the human beings, does the human being across from me lack or fear or aspire to? What matters most to them? Now, I will be raising these questions at TC's three other convocation ceremonies this week, but as teaching and education graduates, you, more than any other group of professionals, will guide the next generation onto the path towards a mutual understanding and mutual respect. You have been and will be working on the front lines with young people whose attitudes and biases have not yet hardened, who are most open to new ideas. Take the experience of TC alumna Raven Hebert, a high school science teacher in Riverside, California, had with a student she taught several years ago. Raven is African-American and the young man is white. During his first weeks of class, Raven overheard this student telling friends that black people weren't intelligent enough to be teachers. Finally, Raven took the, the boy aside and said, do you really believe that? He replied, that's what my father says. And Raven said, well, you're old enough to form your own opinions. What do you think? After that and other conversations over the course of that year, Raven saw this young man reduce his prejudices and form friendships with black and Latinx students. He also learned to look up to Raven as an inspiring role model. Today, Raven remains as close to this young man as she does to any of her other former students. Now, as part of our roles as educators is to help students find their own voices and discover their hidden talents and passions. The arts offer children a portal for self-discovery and self-expression, provided that they have access to it. Now, Eric Williamson, who is graduating today with a master's degree in music and music <laughs> education, <clears throat> Excellent. Eric is someone who has lived the artist's life and chosen to dedicate his life to bringing the power of the arts to others. He has performed in operas worldwide, lent his voice to gospel choirs in New York City, and stood as a backup singer in all types of venues. But Eric's real inspiration are the kids of the Brooklyn Youth Chorus, where he serves as conductor and director of school outreach. As he says, as I have traveled and performed, I kept thinking, I need to share this with more young people because they won't know what's accessible if they, if they aren't presented with an entry point. At TC, faculty have helped Eric learn how children understand music at different stages of their development. He says, quote, Dr. Lori Costadero and Patricia St. John's reframed my philosophy in working with young children and teaching them to be artists as young as age two. They helped me to reconnect with my early childhood musical experiences prior to any formal training, which helped me become the mu musician I am today. And they showed me how to apply those practices into my teaching. He's gained new insights into the art of empowering young people to learn about music by creating it. And he's had the opportunity to put his ideas into practice at the Teachers College Community School with students in grades four through seven. There, in the vocal program he runs, Eric introduces students to music they'll find culturally relevant. The corridor outside his classroom is alive with the sounds of hip hop and rap intermixed with classical 
music, and standards. Eric has his sights set on continuing the Brook with the Brooklyn Youth Chorus and teaching in New York City. And also Eric will be performing during this ceremony with the TC Chorale. Eric, what can I say but encore and congratulations. This is the power of education and education research. This is the power of teaching. This is the power and trust that Teachers College now places in your hands. Some of you will use the power of art and music to inspire this and future generations to see the world more fully and engage the world more imaginatively. Some will prepare students from the earliest grades through college to acquire and enhance their, math, their skills in math, literacy, and language, while others will infuse future citizens with a lifelong understanding and respect for science. And some will develop tools that teach those same future citizens to, dis to distinguish truth from lies and to use communication technology and social media as forces of good. But all of you, educators, artists, administrators, scholars, leaders, all of you will play a vital and decisive role in educating young and future generations to flourish in mind, in body, and in civic spirit. You will teach them to become well-informed citizens who can treat the environment with care and one another with respect. And you will encourage them to think for themselves and you will inspire them to embrace justice. And by teaching them well, you will go a long way towards removing carbon from the air, hate from our discourse, and racism and anti-Semitism from our society. Sadly, you will encounter many people, let's call them education deniers, who will not appreciate your gifts or value your work. They may mock you as social justice warriors. But remember, reversing climate change literally and figuratively is not a lost cause. Even convincing climate and education deniers to change their thinking is not a lost cause. These are all causes just waiting to be won. We look to you, members of the Teachers College class of 2019, to lead the way to those victories. Thank you and congratulations. <laughs> We've now reached the moment in this ceremony when we honor an extraordinary individual whose life's work has advanced the cause of education while upholding TC's core mission to foster excellence and equity in the fields we serve. Among those honored in past ceremonies were Archbishop Desmond Tutu, Coretta Scott King, Senator George Mitchell, Pete Seeger, Eric Holder, Thomas Friedman, Neil deGrasse Tyson, Gail Collins, Spike Lee, Linda Darling-Hammond, Jelani Cobb, Temple Grandin, and the Reverend Dr. O. Butts. This year, we honor four preeminent scholars and practitioners. Michelle Fine, Rosie Phillips Davis, Sarita Brown, and Barbara Morgan. I'm pleased to welcome TC Professor Ansley Erickson joined by Pro Provost Thomas James to introduce Michelle Fine. Thank you. Good afternoon and congratulations, graduates. It is beautiful to see you and your families from here. It is my pleasure to invite our medalist, Professor Michelle Fine, to join us at the podium. Michelle Fine, in an era of growing authoritarianism, resegregation, and othering of society's most vulnerable members, 
you argue that we must honor what people have to say about their own lives, and that those at the bottom of hierarchies say it better. Yet you also have insisted on fully understanding the motivations and actions of all players, and on rigorously testing hypotheses and assumptions. As a scholar, you have conducted groundbreaking research on issues ranging from Maori civil rights to the post 9-11 experience of Muslim American youth to the failure of sex education to acknowledge female desire. Yet it is your landmark 2001 study of New York's Bedford Hills Correctional Facility that best exemplifies your work. You blend qualitative and quantitative methodologies to affect real world change. That research, undertaken after inmates were declared ineligible for Pell Grants, included rich ethnographies of female prisoners' lives. You found that college access reduced prisoners' recidivism. This persuaded a consortium of college presidents to create a BA program at Bedford and sparked the current wave of programs seeking college access for those in prison. Your enlistment of prisoners as co-researchers reflected another of your hallmarks, participatory action research, which you have employed in projects such as Echoes of Brown and in the Public Science Project. Through the latter effort, South Bronx residents have documented experiences of policing in their community. They validate your contention that young people will take agency as scholars when personally engaged and that their efforts at social change constitute legitimate basic research. As an educator, you create spaces where youth and adults with diverse kinds of knowledge can safely challenge each other and build understanding together. And as you did in Echoes, you imagine a rich variety of ways to share this understanding, from poetry to dance to academic writing. Michelle Fine, you have said that your gift is to say, let's have a different conversation. Let's have a different conversation. For your remarkable gift and for the conversations it has engendered and for the benefits to all who resist, we proudly present you with the Teachers College Medal for Distinguished Service. Good afternoon, everyone. This is kind of awesome. I told you you should have gone to Morehouse. <laughs> don't expect it. For those of you who don't know, yesterday's commencement speaker at Morehouse um, decided to pay everyone's student debt. You're not getting that. But I thought about it. You're welcome. So I am honored and, I, and I'm really humbled to be the recipient of the Teachers College Medal for Distinguished Service. And I want to appreciate President Bailey, Dr. Ricker, Chair of the Board, faculty, many of whom are such good friends, staff, the amazing Trish McNichols, Alumni, students, family, your loved ones, children, Professor Erickson, a dear friend, and the sign interpreters. Mostly I say congratulations to the graduating class of 2019. You could cheer yourselves. So together, we sit on stolen land. This land has been stolen many times. 
we gather within two miles of a children's center that is housing children snatched from the arms of their family at the, at the border by our government. We sit in one of the most equal, unequal, and segregated cities in the country. And yet today also, we celebrate your accomplishments as the magnificent graduates of the master's program in arts and humanities, in curriculum and teaching, in math, science, and technology. Both are true. We are saturated in structural violence, and we are aroused by radical possibilities. We have faced dark times before, and we have found light. As our beloved Maxine Green would tell you, we cannot become numb. We must engage aesthetically, not anesthetically, to deep structural injustice. So I'm going to begin with a poem, selected lines, a poem by Ross Gay, a poem about Eric Garner whose mother this week had to contend with the words that the police said, not a big deal, when they learned that her son had been choked. But Ross Gay writes, a small needful fact is that Eric Garner worked for some time for Parks and Recreation Horticulture Department in New York which means, perhaps, that in his very large hands, he put gently into the earth some plants which continue to grow, converting sunlight into food, making it easier for us all to breathe. And so I ask you, graduates, what will you plant in the soil of our deeply troubled nation? How will you commit yourself to be a gardener of radical possibility? Almost 40 years ago, I sat where you sit. I had earned my master's in psychology and route to the PhD. Maybe I was alone, but I was never sure I fit at TC. Anybody else? Yeah. I was raised in the anxious white working class suburbs of New Jersey. I was the youngest daughter of Rose and Jack, Jews from Poland, refugees. Rosie, my mother, was four foot seven, but she lied and said she was four eight, kind of all breasts and Yiddish. She was the youngest of 18, and my father, Jack, was an orphan, he came to East Harlem with his grandmother. They arrived here in 1921 at a moment, in at a moment that historian Karen Brodkin Sachs calls when the Jews became white. And like all immigrants of their day, my parents were undocumented. They had no papers. It was a very different time for immigrants. As a young child, I was the youngest, the chubby girl with frosted flakes watching cartoons in the morning as my father would exit the front door to America to sell plumbing supplies. And as my mother lay in her bed with a shmata on her head, I'm going to use a lot of Yiddish. If you don't know it, you shouldn't be graduating. Shmata's like a, like a wet rag, headaches and depression. And I learned that in immigrant homes, maybe working class homes, maybe lots of homes, somebody holds the pain while others embody the optimism. And I learned that hope and despair live in the same house in fact, they sleep together. So it may come as no surprise to you, particularly those of you in science and technology, that I find myself enamored with the physics concept of quantum
quantum entitlement, entanglement. So this is simply, for the rest of you, a scientific finding that when two particles touch, even when they're separated, they are still communicating. Even when they are far apart from each other, they are still remotely in conversation. So my grandmother, Rebecca, did not schlep all the way from Poland after giving birth to 18 children with a scheidel on her head. You've seen Orthodox women with a, what looks like a wig, with her four youngest at her side, a recently deceased husband left behind, no English, no money, wandering into a foreign land. She lived in Williamsburg before it was Williamsburg. She didn't come here so that I could deliver a banal talk about the American dream. She traveled the ocean so that I might provoke, as Maxine Green would ask me to, a wide awakeness, an awareness of injustice and our responsibility to imagine radical possibilities. So I come to congratulate the class of 2019, graduates of the premier college of education in the country. Tell that to your friends in Cambridge. <laughs> but I come to remind you, as my grandmother might, that in English, TC stands for Teachers College, but in Yiddish, it stands for Tremendous Chutzpah. People know Chutzpah? Yeah. So Chutzpah is, for those of you who might not, Chutzpah is like a really deep Yiddish word that means courage and a little bit of nerve and daring to stretch the borders. So I think if you're a graduate of TC, you have to remember that you are responsible for tremendous chutzpah. That is, you and I, we, are entangled with each other and with the families who live in this neighborhood, in the private housing, but also in the public housing. Your life is entangled with the lady who cleans the bathrooms at TC, who might need something easier on her lungs. You're entangled with formerly incarcerated students in your classrooms and those on the streets, the undocumented students sitting in this room and those outside who shiver at night because they don't know when ice is coming. Your life is entangled with the trans fourth grader who hasn't told anyone. Your life is entangled with the board of trustees and the donors. Your life is entangled with the people who had to move out of this neighborhood because Columbia bought it up. And I could do the same critique of any of our institutions, but we need to speak truth. As the beloved community, to borrow from Martin Luther King, who spoke at this pulpit in 1956, we assemble in the awesome space and history of St. John the Divine. And what I want to do, graduates, is I want to introduce you to five elders you're related to, but you might not know them, but your life is entangled with them. These elders planted seeds in your soil. These are ancestors you don't know, but this is your family. It's like finding out your father has a whole other family, but better. So the five I just want to name and bring into this room because I can't be a TC without them. Maxine Green, Morton Deutsch, Linda Powell Pruitt, Leonard Blackman, Lee Knefelkamp, and I know we also lost Maria Torres Guzman this year. Those folks carried both versions of TC in their bellies. They understood that we needed to build a we. They were gardeners of radical possibility, moved by the obligation to repair the world with scholarship and teaching and even Salon's and Maxine's apartment on Fifth Avenue. 
I can still hear Maxine's brilliant words and almost see the smudges of her red lipstick on the stained glass windows at Millbank. I can imagine more genius and goddess in the TC pool where he swam. I like to think that in the corners of the ombudsman's office, Len Blackman left his favorite jokes, advice, and parables. And Linda, Linda always posed really difficult questions with a beautiful smile, like at West Philly High School when she said, how come all the teachers are white and the kids are black? These are the gifts you carry in your soul. Leah Maria just left us, and I'm sure you can still feel the wind of their relentless spirits. Lee agreed to be the dissertation mentor to Kathy Boudin and Judy Clark when we were working in the prison. Judy Clark, who was just released from prison after 32 years. Kathy Boudin, now a professor here at Columbia. Before you officially graduate, I have to give you a little Maxine. As we drove up the Sawmill Parkway in 1997, Maxine was anxious. Anybody knew Maxine? She was always anxious. She was anxious. She was about to give a talk in the prison in my research methods class, and she was worried she would have nothing in common with the women. So she decided to teach the short story, I Stand Here Ironing, about, by Tilly Olson, about a working class woman whose child was removed by a social worker. She then told the story of losing Linda, her own daughter, to cancer many years before. And we all cried with many women who lost access to their children because of incarceration. Fast forward at the end of her life, as Maxine lay in a bed at Lenox Hill Hospital, unable to fully grasp her breath, she turned to me and to Carol Saltz from TC Press, and she said, I'm so scared, hold me. And then a soft comfort fell on her face, and she reached toward what looked like nothing, and she said, oh, there's Linda. She saw her daughter waiting to help her transition and then looking back at us, she said, quick, let's sing Solidarity Forever. So we did, there in Lenox Hill, Solidarity Forever. You don't know that song? How are we letting you graduate if you don't know chutzpah in that song? Everyone was wide awake. Maxine knew that in miserably unjust times, we have an obligation to sing for justice. You and I, with our papers and our credentials, we have a duty to name injustice, to forge solidarities, to speak the unspeakable. In today's deeply revolting times, we watch, we ache, we protest, we feel complicit, we bear witness to the fraying of the public sector, we watch the stratification of which children are allowed to think critically and who gets kill and drill. We watch the hyper-segregation of schools and communities perversely in drag as choice. We bear witness to the criminalization of youth of color, immigrant youth, young people with disabilities, and those who identify as LGBT. We bear witness as women in Alabama and their doctors are about to be criminalized. We hear public school educators, their unions, and yes, teacher education programs mocked. We hear calls to arm teachers with more tests and more guns. If climate change is going to destroy the earth, the privatization and neoliberal testing madness of public education is going to destroy democracy. We know better, you know better. We know what poor children, children of color, LGBTQ youth, 
young people with disabilities or those who are undocumented are being denied. So this is the time to embrace your TC essence to stand for educational justice, racial justice, and labor justice as though they were one word. To defend the last democratic socialist institution in the country, public schools. To insist, I paid them, to insist on play. I was just in Norway. They have kindergarten from age one to six where kids play and paint and they'll read when they learn to read. To insist on performance assessments, on culturally responsive education, on finance equity, on detracking, on restorative justice, on classroom-based participatory action research, on sex education that is LGBTQ affirming and reminds people who dies when abortion is illegal. We need schools that are recognized as resources in their communities, not gentrifiers, not foreplay to condominiums. You come from TC, a proud, unapologetic lineage of mouth, heart, and courage. Graduates, we live in revolting times. As people with varying forms of privilege, you, we, have one more assignment before you graduate and for the rest of your life. To speak, act, disrupt, challenge, critique, and help birth image of what could be. To plant a seed of radical possibility. Remember, you are the graduating class of Teachers College 2019. And while I won't pay your debt, I do think, if I'm right, that Alicia Keys dedicated a song to you, and that song is... Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome student speaker Alexander Wojcik, master's candidate, Department of Arts and Humanities. Wow, there's a lot of you here. <laughs> Good afternoon, Teachers College. I want to first say hello to the faculty, the administration, staff, volunteers, alumni, guests, family members, chosen family members, and of course, today's graduates. I want to thank you all for coming and giving me this wonderful opportunity to speak to my friends and colleagues here today. I also want to give a quick shout out to my family from Nevada and California. I dragged them 3,000 miles for this. Hi. <laughs> when I was first asked to prepare this speech, I knew exactly how I was going to end it. But I had no idea where to begin. What could I say to everyone here that they hadn't already heard? So I thought I'd start at the beginning. To put it in context, I came to Teachers College in the dead of winter as a spring admit two and a half years ago. Being from California, I didn't believe the rumors that New Yorkers only wore dark clothing, so naturally, I came to New York after never visiting before, and on my first day of class, I wore red pants, a floral t-shirt, and my hair was bleached white. So of course, I sat in the back of the room where no one would notice me. But they did notice, and not only that, I was welcomed immediately with open arms to the philosophy and education program, which is so lovingly run by Dr. David Hansen and Dr. Megan Laverty. 
It's right there. <laughs> I want to take a quick moment and thank them, as well as my philosophy and education family. We are a very small but very loud program. <laughs> I shared this moment with you, and you taught me what it means to cultivate my own philosophy of education. My first day of class, I was asked an important question, and a question that I echo here today. I was asked, what is the purpose of education? And more specifically, what is our purpose in education? I'm sure that many of you have been asked the same or similar question. What is the very reason why we are here gathered today? Now, I want you to do something really quick for me. I want you to take a moment and ask yourself, why are you here? While I don't have an exact answer, and I'm pretty sure I never will, I want to share with you today what I've learned to be our purpose as TC graduates. Our purpose in education comes in three parts. I'm not going to quiz you so you don't have to take notes. The first part is to find our voices. We as educators more often than not lose our voices, especially in the very loud world of academia. It takes time and commitment and conscious effort to find our own voices in the large amount of research theory, and scholarship. It is here, among our colleagues, our classmates, and our friends that we first learn just how strong our voices are. They come from our work, our research, and our advocacy, and our convictions as educators. From my own experiences here at Teachers College, I have learned what my voice sounds like, pushing for comprehensive queer education, and the idea that education itself is a form of advocacy. It took some time, but I know that my voice is no longer just a whisper. The second part is using the voices that we had found. We as students in the departments here of Arts and Humanities, Curriculum and Teaching, and Mathematics, Science, and Technology hold special positions as educators as we bring voices from so many unique aspects of education we as arts and humanities students speak to the past and to the foundations and to the beauty of education. We as curriculum and teaching students speak to the present and to the importance of how teaching is structured. And we as mathematics, science, and technology students speak to the future. And we look forward to what education can be. Now it is important to note that we do not give our voice to others, nor do we speak on behalf of others. Rather, we use our voices to amplify those unique positions and give our own meaning to the purpose of education. Finally, and most importantly, and probably the most difficult for us to learn, is that our purpose in education is not to change the world. Rather, we are meant to make it accessible. Education is not only a tool, but it is also a path. And we as educators are charged with carving this path so that our students may more easily travel on it at our sides. As educators, the burden of the future is often placed on our shoulders. And while it's a valiant goal to try to change the world, and don't get me wrong, I like playing the role of superhero sometimes, I've learned that that is not our purpose. Our purpose is to ensure our students and our community members are those superheroes. We are not meant to change the world they live in, but rather to ensure that they can live in it. During my time at Teachers College, I have gotten the incredible chance to work with so many of you in so many different fields. I truly thank each and every one of you for the lessons I have learned and for the opportunity to listen to your voices. So what do I leave you with? I'm from the Philosophy and Education program, so there's an entire plethora of quotes I could end this speech on. But as I said at the beginning, I know exactly how to end this speech. I leave you with the same sentiment I left my students two and a half years ago. Leaving my position as a teacher was the most difficult thing I had ever done, up until today at least. I wanted to leave you with the same feeling I experienced when I left them that day. I want you all to know how proud I am of you, the same way I felt about them. I told them my favorite quote on education, which is about what it means to be proud teacher. And here, I stand as a proud friend. It's from one of my favorite films, Treasure Planet. The main character's teacher instills a lesson of love, admiration, 
pride and hope in his student. And this is the same message I wanna share with you, my Teachers College family. So with this, I end my time at Teachers College. You all have the makings of greatness in you, but you gotta take the helm and chart your own course. Stick to it, no matter the squalls. And when the time comes and you really get a chance to test the cut of your sails and show them what you're made of, well, I hope I'm there catching some of the light coming off of you that day. And trust me, I see a lot of light here today. To the Teachers College class of 2019, cheers and congratulations. Let's find that purpose together. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the TC Chamber Singers, conducted by Derek Thompson, EDD candidate, Music and Music Education Program, Department of Arts and Humanities.
And now, to recognize each of the master's degree candidates are Tom Rock, Vice Provost of Student Affairs, and Christine Room, Associate Provost. Good afternoon. At this time, it gives us great pleasure to read the names of those candidates for the Master of Arts Education, Master of Philosophy, and Master of Science degrees at Teachers College, Columbia University. All degrees will be conferred at the Columbia University ceremony on Wednesday. Thank you very much. And now the candidates for the Master of Arts, Master of Education, Master of Philosophy, and Master of Science degrees. We'd now like to welcome the candidates in the Department of Arts and Humanities. Samantha Reed. Yuanhan Wang. Wailun Valiant So. Madison Griffin. Carolina Cabronella Varela. Chander Kuo Ying Sang. Chloe Chen Lu. Dakota Powell. Tian Tian. Carolyn Gabriel Stephanie Rechberg. Wait, wait. Jai Li. Tyrone Santana Copeland. Nan Li. Mengyu Li. Jin Yan Lu. Yan Sing. Ye Hua Chen. Si Yuan Na. In Han Jiang. Ziyan Liao. Ji Xing Guo. Yi Wen Wang. Yandi Liu. Yu Han Ni. Shushi Wang. Eden Halperin. Jixing Zhuang. Molly Bondi. Yumang Zhang. Imani White Anigboro. Heather Himes. Michelle Rosenthal. Chiaka Odi. Clara Bauman. Lei Jin. Nicholas Sadinsky. Jianqiu Wu. Tevin Ware. 
Zichang Wang. Bethany Salutes. Hong Gao. Ryan Lupka. Jenny Zhang. Tyler Su. Catherine Chow. Joseph Victor Fritz. Ray Lee. Genevieve Hines. Yin Lin. Jacqueline Bird. Yua Zhang. Gabriella Rincon. Lauren Han. Elizabeth Singh. Addison Lax. Angela Dragon. Noel Friend. Yu Hui Gong. Shayna Gilbert. Xiaoxing Cheng. Kayla Verbinowich. Xiaonun Chu. Whitney Sorensen. Jing Wang. Joseph Deegan. Ying Li Wang. Kayla Conklin. Su Yun Cha. Caitlin O'Leary. Jia Wei Lin. Veronica Salas. Chiare Chen. Hannah Van Dolsen. Sing Win Chang. Angela Papa Giorgio. Yanfei Zhou. Xiao Zhou Lu. Wenting Yang. Nicole Hong. Ying Jun Wang. Regina Brown. Alexander Krenitsky. Tiffany Chu. Nathan Floro. Aaron Arbelize McGoughlin. Joseph Tropiano. Zoe Schrader. Caroline Myers. Lori Bohigian. Sarah Rebell. Carla Salamea. A Alex Wojcik. Alessandro Rebondango. Carl Joyner. Paulina Castro. Bang Hain Lee. Veronica Garcia. Chloe Unbi Song. Belen Santos. Psyche Lucy Chia. Sarah Hinton. Sage Weber. Julia Gibson. Chiamaka. Susan Kang. Singyu Lai. Anderson Bridgemohan. Tamara Bachara. Josh Highcamp. Alexander Lee. Sarah Bags Eastwood. Daniel Chan. Alton Rahim McCall III. Sonia Liu. Raymond Andrew Stahl David. Christina Umana. Lucas Capra. Malika Anderson. Emily O'Brien. Jessica Gregory. Nia Gibson. Christina Capiello. Jasmine Lizer. Megan Singer. Farrell Ocasio. Brianne Rosa. Sean Gorman. 
Odette Castaneda. Elizabeth Campbell Harris. Isaac Park. Allison Emmanuel. Michael Gentili. <laughs> Marnie Helper. Zachary Kronstadt. Cassandra Virgin. Jin Wu. Yaing Shan. Anlin Tong. Yu Guang Li. Yu Zhao. Xiaoyang Li. Zhuan Zhang. Ting Chong Xu. Chowen Sung. Allison Lavosky. Yi Fan Wang. Kaolin Edwa. Chujuan Town. Hairo Mo. Chue Huang. Larilyn Mariola Patterson Parmsford. <laughs> VJ. Siwen Si. Shin Yu Rainy Ma. Charlotte Bennett. Shun Li Hong. Alexa Green. And Yu Liu. Christopher D'Amico. Ya Jae Jung. Eric Williamson. Laurel Dispenza. Deepika Vasudevan. Megan Magden Postal. Deepika Vasudevan. Fun Liu. Kelly France. Xing Hu. Ananda Benbo. Vicky Orozco. Chinachart Pularo. Tanachia. John Punnett Pornkit. John Dundon. Wei Hong Pan. Stephanie Anafre. Zon Zong. Alicia Thompson. Chen Chen Xiao. Rebecca Wise. Tiffany Darnley. Marissa Mamon. Tiffany Darnley. Sophia DeVito. Sarah DeWind. Sophia, so Sophia DeVito. Mary Rossiter. Tamara Berdachevsky Osivievich. Blair Casey. Lynn Fung. Alexandra Sherlock. Eva Nevs. Shin Hu Zhou. Mi Lin. Becky Wilkening. Christopher Shea. Yeah. Ton Nguyen. Lauren Wells. Juan Carlos Santos Andrade. Elizabeth Milligan. Kylie Mullins. Lily Dowling. Rebecca Yu. Carrie Savoy. Rebecca Yu. Stephen McFarlane. Caroline Kelly. 
Wisdom Tong. Dan Yuan. Arlene Vatinayan. Julia Sung. Gabriel Marshall. Su Yang Lim. Ini Chern. Elisaveta Nikitin. Ying Hong Du. Joel Henderson. Laura Berger. Roman Pechenov. Xiao Chen Wen. Tommy Jonathan Kumala. Heather Ditmars. Yang Jia. Tagrin Washira Dress School. Yinua Ga. Allison Light. Yanning Sui. Lauren Williams. Emerson Chang. Prawa Libra Santana. Naomi Lipman Zell. Beryl Ford. Chad Rabago. Angelica Chan. Caitlin Green. Lisa Burke. Caroline Gart. Peter Yufu Huang. Will the students and the faculty from the Department of Arts and Humanities please stand and recognize our graduates? Congratulations. I'd now like to welcome the, the candidates in the Department of Curriculum and Teaching. Nicole Fox. Debbie Yu. Shauna Druckerman. Maureen Gardner. Si Ying Kong. Jessica Benvenuto. Ala Karuni. Spiro Zaki. Yes. Linda Pack. Fumiati. Stephanie Fumiati. <laughs> Jane Caroline Lee Hill. Bryn Hansen. <laughs> Allison Brunner. Amanda Tepadino. <laughs> Deviana Chandra. Allison Parsley. Cynthia Lee. Ran Zhou. Eunice Yunhee Chung. Sujin Kwan. Anji Jung. Brianna Amorti. Suhyun Song. Christine Cipollini. Talia Rodriguez. Paige Story. Young Shu Li. Alfroza Sultana. Esther Kuhn. Shua Chen. Esther Kuhn. Pania Tahir. Rachel Moskowitz. Jennifer Sklar. Danielle Soloway. Kamala Stack. Emma Holtzman. Lisa Stubenrau. Prathna Saravia. Darius David. Unmi Lee. Carisha Phillip. Dan Rubens. 
Alexandra Darley. TJ Shi. Michelle Brownstone. Alice Kong. Michelle Brownstone. Raven Wilhelm. Aaliyah Edwards. Andrea Wiley. Chloe Tawitz Jerna. Jane Marie Hutchinson. Anna Skierbeek. Catherine Endler. Molly Dickman. Raquel Vigil. Alyssa Harris. Ziying Yao. Zanab Salim. Kara Wilson. <laughs> Megan Draghi. <laughs> Hannah Mosenthal. Allison Vasco. <laughs> Lisa Fujitaki. <laughs> Jennifer Hong. <laughs> Armel Gooday. <laughs> Nicola Burrow. Sarah Graff. Rebecca Kim. Charlotte Clinch. Clarissa Felix. Elizabeth Van Bramer. Kia Widlow. Elizabeth Van Bramer. Kristen Michelina. Jermicia Chernell. Dong Dong Liu. Danielle Comerford. Rachel Kwan. Yulin Zong. Alana. Rachel Kwan. Alana Fruckman. Cheng Tao. Elana Fruckman. Bao Chi Shu. Jennifer Fodi. Ning Xiang. Laura Rincon. D. Pei. Christy Benfanti. Shannon Allison. Colleen Lawler. Olia Juman. Clark Tugwell. Brittany Scott. Lauren Skolnick. Arcadia Jerez. Alexandra Lafferty. Emma Bimowski. Is that right here? Harold Turner. Emma Bimowski. Elena Goldman. Maya Alexander. Elena Goldman. Stephanie Rivera. Madeline McCabe. Javon Alexander. Anise McAllister. Natalie Rodriguez. Youngbin Kim. Rebecca Conowitz. Rebe Rebecca is accompanied by her grandfather, Bert Conowitz, who is a member of the TC Music Education Program faculty for 50 years. Will the students and the faculty from the Department of Curriculum and Teaching please stand so we can salute our graduates. Congratulations. I'd now like to welcome the Candidates in the Department of Mathematics, Science, and Technology. Momo Sullivan. Maria Decker. Omar Yassin. Arisa Hirabayashi. John Vahedi. 
Joel Steiger. Christian Morehouse. Zhang Han Tsai. Caitlin Rose Lewis. Zhao Jun Yang. Christopher Tufo. Caitlin McGrade. Abby Weinstein. Su Yuan Wan. Ramsey Curzum. Sarah Gift. Akira Wong. Andres Rodriguez Aponte. Katie Behrman. Ishrat Ahmed. Benjamin Antel. Pimnipa Kangsanan. Shashu Chen. Nori Negron. Jahwe Du. Anastasia Nassal. Wanki Zhu. Mariana Breitman. Bing Juan. Christina Best. Yanran Wong. Rebecca Rosenberg. Jing Yu Lo. Ming Lei. Chinong Zhang. Chung Chi Hao. Ru Xu. Ching Shui Huang. Xiao Ran Xie. Yao Lu. Go ahead. Ming Long. Yan Tang Man. Ming Lao. Zhirping Xiang. Christine Tang. Munyun Yang. Zhao Li Zhang. Ning An. Xin Yi Huang. David Schistler. Amy Louise Kerner. Marcus Chung. Joanne Dory An. Anna Kong. Emma Payin Wang. Caroline DeVoe, congratulations. Wei Ying Drew. Junun Gu. Liu Jin. Shuai Yuan. Chu Yuan Yu. Guan Chu Li. Gannett Cassidy. Lian Pong. Chuan Win. Jie Chong Li. Andrew Gim. Lillian Ishwan Lin. Sharon Pearson. Go ahead, shake hands. Paola Ricci. Xueling Chen. Xiaofan Zhang. Angel Chang Wei. Juan Juadi. Yu Care Wu. Yang Fang Di. Chao Meng Zhang. Xuanzhu Wang. Will the students and the faculty from the Department of Mathematics, Science, and Technology please stand and recognize our graduates? <clears throat> and would all of our students and all of our faculty please stand and congratulate our graduates?
And now, for the presentation of the candidates, please welcome Provost Thomas James. Please be seated. President Bailey, Mr. Rickert, trustees, faculty, staff, and guests. It is my pleasure as Provost of the College to present to you the master's candidates from Teachers College. Please hold your applause until I've enumerated all of the degree recipients. Would the Masters of Arts candidates please stand and be recognized and remain standing? Would the Master of Science candidates please stand and be recognized and remain standing? Would the Master of Philosophy candidates please stand to be recognized and remain standing? And would the Master of Education candidates now stand and be recognized and remain standing? President Bailey, I ask you to recommend these students for the granting of their master's degree on Wednesday morning at Columbia University commencement exercises. Applause for all. Again. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Marion Boltby, the president of the Teachers College Alumni Association. Alumni. Let me say that again. Alumni. It is my distinct pleasure to formally welcome you into the Teachers College Alumni Association. As you stand here before this esteemed audience and alongside your peers, we look on with great pride. Today, you join our Alumni Association, a network of over 90,000 professionals comprised of graduates from a myriad of academic backgrounds and all walks of life, who have created an incredible legacy. You will now become a part of that legacy. Your fellow Teachers College alumni have made a global impact, shaping many fields of inquiry and practice. They have done so through their leadership, tenacity, experience, and wisdom. They have also done so because of people like the ones around you today who form your support systems and network of peer mentors. Many would also argue that they have done so because of their teacher's college preparation. We know that you too will follow in these footsteps and make your own mark just as you needed support during your time at TC, we know you will need similar resources as you embark on your careers. And we encourage you to look to Teachers College for that support. I'm here today to tell you how valuable your participation in our Alumni Association can be. We are colleagues and collaborators, supporters, and challengers, mentors and mentees, and most importantly, we are your peers. What keeps us all together is our alma mater, Teachers College. While everyone has had a different journey, I am certain that no one's path leading to this time and place was free of challenges. I'm also certain that along the way, you found inspiration, insight, and I hope joy. And many of you have developed what will become lifelong friendships. I encourage you to stay connected with your classmates as you move forward in your careers and to tap into the deep pool of expertise and knowledge offered by the broader TC community. We hope to see you at future alumni events, as well as featured in future newsletters. 
know that you will always have a home at TC's vibrant community. On behalf of your fellow alumni, we wish you all the best in your endeavors. Congratulations and welcome to the Alumni Association. Ladies and gentlemen, William Rickert, Chair of the Teachers College Board of Trustees. On behalf of the trustees of Teachers College, I want to congratulate each and every one of you on your extraordinary achievement. We thank your family and friends for joining with the faculty and staff of Teachers College to recognize you, our master's graduates of the class of 2019. We know that your contributions to improving the lives of your fellow human beings will become part of the TC legacy and make us all proud. Please join us for light refreshments in Russell Courtyard back at Teachers College. Friends and family, we ask that you remain in your seats until all of our graduates have departed. Congratulations and thank you.